my project for future and fun is called Provenance. And I think it began years ago on my first day in a workshop at UEA. And I was at the Sainsbury Center. My group was having their, we were having our workshop in a seminar room at the Sainsbury Center. And I sat down and I was looking across the room and in the show glass, I saw the statuette. And it looked very familiar to me. Um, this is, I've been in Norwich for a few days or a week at most. I was feeling very disoriented. And I look across the room and I see the statuette that is very familiar, but it seems to me at that moment improbable that it would be there. And during the break, I walked up to it and realized that I'd been right. It was an Orisha Ibeji from, if I remember correctly, Ushobo, which is in my home state in Nigeria. And the Ibeji startlets were usually uh, made after one twin had died. And in some ways, they were a kind of repository for the life force of the twin that had died. They would be taken care of as the living twin would be. They would be decked with beads, um, just cared for as though they were um, real physical flesh, you know, embodiments of a spirit that is believed to have departed. And it was um, something that I began to think about then, what it meant for this statuette to be here and the significance of that and whether it was in its rightful place. Um, so when we started thinking about the future from project and devising um, a project for the 50th year uh, celebration for UEA, it felt just right to go back to that statue and begin to think with it and think about it and to through it in some way interrogate how a lot of the heart from um, Nigeria, from other African countries have ended up in museums in Europe and around the world. And particularly with the statuettes, which was the Urushai Beji statuettes, um, to consider through this project the spiritual significance of the statuette to the people who made it, and to essentially create an alternative provenance for this object beyond whatever label appears be beside it in a museum. In some way, it's an attempt to draw you in or I think maybe better still make um, anyone who's viewing this sort of object more aware of their positioning in a century long hack for um, African people and our hearts and in, in relation to European museums and um, the current conversation about where the rightful homes of this object are. The way I'm approaching this at the moment is to listen and read a lot of material. And in listening to all that material, so this poetry around Ibeju twins um, in the Yoruba culture, and one evening last week, one of the things I did was just play some of it over and over again and it's it's um it feels for me as if i'm listening for the story i'm going to tell perhaps with this project more than any other one i've ever done i feel that the story is one that's already exists in a material way and i just have to find it i think that this my process for this project is fundamentally different in one way in that right from the beginning and thinking with a whole team about what it is I'm working on. Um, I don't think I've ever done that. I usually don't talk to anybody about something until I've finished at the very least a draft or sometimes three. 
so with this project, everything is collaborative. I'm talking through the initial ideas I have. I'm switching from that idea to another um, and then creating almost in real time while my collaborators are sort of looking on. It's been very useful to work with Mutiny and have check-ins where I talk about my ideas, I write down where the story is and we bounce back and forth about what is possible, what form it can take for the audience. So where we're now, we're thinking of a triptych um, and I'm exploring how to communicate, how to draw a participant into three different worlds at the same time. So uh, sort of the philosophical underpinnings or the cosmic underpinnings, I guess, is to examine the three worlds in which these statuettes exist and the people that they represent. Um, the world of the living, the world of the dead, and the world of the unborn, and how to replicate that as an experience and draw people into being not just spectators of what is going on, but active participants.